What is good? We're chugging in faces. Let's go. Is that what that was? I thought you were about, I was about to get stone cold stunned or something. <laughs> do it. Do it. Chug it in its face. Didn't work as well. I can't be chugging craft beer. Or... How's it going, Jay Wayne, besides getting chugged in your face to start this thing off? It's going delicious. That was a nice little cream ale from the Revelry. He's got a... Crushable. That's what you call those. <laughs> you call those crushable. Just not in someone's face. I got a lot of cores light left from a uh, party at the house because we were playing a lot of, as you would say, beer games. They called me over for for, for for beer games. Yeah. So how you how you doing tonight? You ready to roll? Ready to go through this uh, top 50 ADP review here? Bribes. I got beer on my computer. Wipe it off and let's go. What was the question? Just don't rub it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm rubbing the shit out of that thing. Well, I'm doing just fine. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Um, yeah. You look like it. We're going to do a, uh, we got a little vintage Niners on today. All right. Let's roll. You don't have a team, so you have no vintage gear. Yeah, I'm it's the Jaguars fan. <laughs> 2021, baby. Let's go. All right. So today we're going to run through a top 50 ADP review. Um, this is going to be DLF's most recent ADP, which just came out. And this is just going to kind of tell us the state of dynasty fantasy football, the upper echelon or the high society types, if you will, since I know that's all you bitches care about <laughs> snobs. I only care about the top guys <laughs> our, our late round stabs. Least amount. Nobody of cares. Of Middle round. Nobody cares. Just give me the top guys. Oh, and, oh, and cool no, I, don't need, I don't need any information on them. Just tell me which one to take where cool. Beasley's a good player. Nah, <laughs> no, um, don't care who, we're not going to do a whole lot of buy or sell here. No big conversations. That's not really the point. Just want to give you an idea of where things stand and where we're heading into trading camp and, and preseason and such. Uh, we will be dropping some like longer form mocks uh, covering plenty of topics, what to do, you know, how to how to draft, where to pick guys, tiers, those kind of things. So uh, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of that. Uh, we will be doing also live 30 second per pick mocks with our uh patrons uh so you can always support your boys through the uh the patreon there we got a discord rolling and we always have mocks slow and fast both of the mocks that we will be doing live and non-live and discussing long form will be uh with our patrons um, those guys are those guys are sharp so it's, so they're good mocks they they resemble uh i think a better standing than you would if you just regularly mocked with strangers on something else so good practice there even if you only join for a month or two um but yeah so you're we're gonna uh, as and then as the summer transition we're gonna uh we're gonna roll into redraft and do lots of mocks there so it's gonna be fun so subscribe 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 <laughs> yeah we're doing the mock slow fast and at a medium pace <laughs> There, that's how you know you're a 90s kid if that's, you don't without saying you're a 90s kid that's right um all right so let's get into this we'll go round one we'll probably keep this at about medium medium pace i'd say all right we're editing on the fly here here we go booyaka all right so round one top five fairly well settled in nestled in all tight uh we got cmc jt saquon dalvin and alvin kamara that's pretty much the way i would do it as well uh, I like and that. If you haven't watched one of these ADP videos, just to break it down, if you can't read, uh, June in the left column, May in the right column. We're comparing last month's changes to this month. And June just came out. It takes them a couple weeks to get that next month's ADP out. Um, but we're going to go through the top 48 or 50 uh, and see how they changed from last year. Which I said, you said that, but just a visual. Sure, for sure. The like it. Good. All right, so Justin Jefferson then is the first wide receiver off the board, all running backs to go off the rip. No surprise there. He and A.J. Brown have been duking it out and jockeying for the number one dynasty receiver off the board. But this month, Justin Jefferson goody all up in that A.J. Brown's face because he the number one. <laughs> Who are you taking? I'm taking A.J. Brown. Give me Let DK me get that. Metcalf. All right, well, we'll get to some DK. So A.J. Brown's next at seven, like I said, jockeying back and forth. Tyreek Hill uh, jumps back up from... Uh, to eight from twelve in May. So if you were if you held your stock price there, you you know you made a little money. So hooray for your Tyreek Hill stocks there. I feel like veterans get pushed up early, or, or, or younger players get pushed up early in the off season. And as you get closer towards drafting, the the guy you know is good gets. Yeah. starts to elevate a Some little. Chiefs jumping around in here that's kind of inexplainable, but a lot of a lot of weird things kind of going on in this draft that I don't know necessarily have a rhyme or reason that I've quite 
pinpointed yet, but Which, we'll, we'll discuss be, this as we go. It could on. be different drafters, I guess. Sure. Uh, they, they compile, I think, six different drafts and then put all that ADP together over on DLF, which is what we're looking at right. here. Yeah, so your boy DK and Cam Akers swap spots here. DK's nine, Akers is ten. Um, so that's that would be your number one guy off the board for receivers. Then Nick Chubb and Devontae Adams just go ahead and just – all their way back into the first round uh, from being 2-1 and 2-3 last month. So that puts a bow on the first round there if you want to hit the button and transition to the second We're round. Big <laughs> screen. So you can see all more of us. Do we have that like some transition music like an old school PowerPoint or something? I, I haven't. I, I think you can move. I think you can do sounds with your transitions, nice. but I haven't figured it out yet. All right. Can I we, have been you, putting sounds do, in in the post. Yeah! I'm trying to reduce my post uh, effort here. So. Yeah, all right. I like it. All right, so let's get into round two. Diggs is the 2-1 or 13th pick uh, this month after being down at 19 last month. So maybe a little credence to what you were saying. The veterans just yole, 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 climbing that mountain. A uh, little, little, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Yole, yole, yeah, yole, yeah, yole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little Price is Right. Yeah. Price is Right humor there for you. Uh, Swift, the second sophomore off the board here. Um. Well, I guess the third sophomore because Justin Jefferson, second sophomore running back. Um, he was um, remaining one ahead of Cam Akers last month, but this month he has fallen uh, back to pick 14 or uh, back to pick. Uh, yeah, two, pick 14. Two. Yeah, 2-2. Two, two. Sorry about that. All, all um, so, you know, a lot of negativity around Swift right now and the offense that he's in and the, the coach coming out and saying what he's saying and, you know, maybe not, not like being, anything's changed, though. Right, so I, whether whether or not you Todd Gurley, whether or not it's warranted or not, whether that Cam Akers should be all the way up there and Swift should be all the way back here, neither of those should guys. both of them be back a little further. That's what you need to subscribe for when we get into those mocks. We're going to talk about all that. Um, Derrick Henry moves up four spots to fifteen. Uh, was definitely a little more interested when he was down the four further spots. I like him when he comes to the end of the second round here. Typically in those mocks that we've been doing a lot of, but I just I don't love it. Uh, right in the right in the beginning of the second round there. Simmons is so old. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 anyway, let's not get too into it. We'll, hey, we do have a video, though, of what you should do with your aging running back. So maybe check that out. Maybe yeah. Throw and a little and we will be talking a little bit more about Derrick Henry and where to pick him in those upcoming mocks again. So subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Um, Antonio Gibson jumps up four cells for all you Excel uh, spreadsheet nerds. Um <laughs> To RB10, pick 16, was 20 Excel, overall. Excel sheets are what's wrong with fantasy football. A bunch of nerds thought they could figure out football with, with Excel, and it, it just... How's that working for a lot of you? Not great. Oh, I guess you would argue the contrary, that you're smarter than everybody else. So anyway, um, that's neither here nor there. We'll get into that on the mocks, too. No, we won't, but... Um, <laughs> in the everlasting battle between Kelsey and Kittle, Zeus... Rises up. Uh, Kelsey Tops is the top tight end at pick 17 here um, and jumps nine spots. So crazy jump there. I, I got to be in on Kittle. Like I said, the, the Chiefs, ju everyone jumps up except for Clyde Edwards. We'll get to him. Not everyone. The only two guys that matter on the Chiefs apparently jump up and everybody and Clyde stays the same. But we'll get well, I digress. We'll get there. Um, but I think I got to take Kittle first at this point. Just age, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, we've been on Team Kittle over Kelsey for maybe, a, I guess, a year. Uh, we, we jumped on that bandwagon, and, and now Pitts is getting thrown in the discussion. But for Kelsey to jump up nine spots, and this isn't tied in premium either, so I'm not sure, right. and I can't take him that high, especially in regular scoring. Right, not tied, non tight end premium, definitely not. Um, speaking of spreadsheet warriors, Eckler posts a ridiculous burst score, leaps more than a whole round. Up to 18, pick 2-6 from 3-9. Biggest jumper? Question mark? What the hell happened here? I guess they just didn't draft a running back or didn't bring anybody in or anything like that. And, you know, Kalen Balazs is gone, so that really opens things up for oh, Eckler. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, yeah. I, I don't really get it. I, I, I'm fine with Eckler, um, but I don't really understand why the why the why he was so down. He was a good value. Now he's jumped back up. Uh, but the, what a, what a burst score with maybe, that guy. Maybe That's take a, the maybe if he could. Uh, what is it? What do they say? Something like yield to the mean or something? If they would transition to the mean, 
between. I don't your know. Feet. You're you're the smart guy of the group here. Uh, you should be telling us what's going on. I I don't know all my. You did all you you, Excel you spreadsheet tried to jump into formulas. the spreadsheet game and the fantasy football thing, and that's why you don't like it because you thought it was stupid. I thought I could figure out fantasy football with spreadsheets. You're right. I, the first, yeah, I was like, I spent a whole weekend like trying to figure it out, and then I was like, this is dumb. I, well, it I takes years, Jason. Anything. That was your problem. Mm. Years. Now I put a solid weekend of of. Um, Goodwill hunting effort into that bitch, and uh, yeah, I found out Nikhil Harry wasn't really that good. So <laughs> it was long before that. <laughs> yeah. Long before that. Yeah, 2013 maybe. That was just a shot at the spreadsheet, guys. Which we probably shouldn't do. That we're not we're not helping ourselves out by no. I'm trying fine. To I like I like the account. analytics. That's why I don't even like you talking shit about it. I know. And we threw analytics into our rookie profiles, which we did a bunch of them in. Just so I like to stay up on it. But hey, give me the whole picture. Just don't paint me into a corner just because of this. Right. Anyhow, I digress. Digression. All right, CD Lamb, the first big faller here, drops from eleven to nineteen. Um, don't love that. I'm fine with C.D. Lamb. I mean, C.D. Lamb could easily be the first wide receiver off the board, and I don't think I would argue with you all that much. I think that there's I mean, you know, a lot to be unpacked there, and he's still an absolute stud. And, yeah, you might have to deal with a little bit of crowded roster for a year or so here, but, I mean, C.D. is going to be just fine and be awesome. And there could be, in a year, he could be the the number one receiver off the board because he was is that dirty. I mean, I think D.K. Metcalf is going to be the number one receiver off the board in a year because, I mean, he already almost led the league in receiving, and he just it feels like he still has untapped potential. There's times where he looks like an absolute monster. So does C.D. Yeah, but it's just a, like as a rookie. If if there's a, a a wide receiver that you can just get and hold him for 10 years. C.D., baby. Well, D.K. too. A.J. Brown, too. Yeah. Not Nikhil Harry, though. <laughs> Not Nikhil Harry. He's People have let go of Nikhil Harry for sure, but he couldn't miss. He couldn't miss. Couldn't Got to take him over the running backs. Anyhow, Zeke is down four spots to 20 overall. Probably a really strong value there. We've, we've kind of talked about it a couple of times. Like if, if Zeke would have had the season that he normally has, he'd be up there in that top six, eight, ten picks. Um, so Najee Harris takes his first steps back. Uh, well, it was more like four steps back. Uh, 20 from 20 to six from 16 to 20. Uh, but Camp Buzz, I believe, will have him trucking his way forward in no time. Well, I have 21 to 17, but uh, okay, similar. same thing, very similar. Uh, yeah, good job. <laughs> the um, spreadsheet, Casey. Yeah, the goddamn spreadsheet. Well, that's why okay? I don't like him because I don't, son of a I, bitch, I screw him up. Uh, next, we're at all aboard the Gus buses rolling. J.K. Dobbins down eight effing spots. Oh, I like that in terms of giving me more J.K. Dobbins. Like, if you're going to make him cheaper, that's fantastic. Sure. That's, Again, that's in, too these, low. in these mocks, we're going to talk a lot about these sophomore running backs and where we're, where we, where we, which ones we want to take where. So, subscribe. Um, Joe Mixon wraps up the second round up six spots. You know, interesting for a non-every down back to move up six spots. That was before the news blurb, so maybe that'll knock him back down a couple uh, a couple of spots there. He's not going to be on the field every snap. Oh, no. No fourth and eight. He's not punting and uh, might, might miss a couple downs here. Don't just settle down. I, I, I think this is a smart increase in Mixon's ADP. You like it. Yeah, right. I mean, not for me getting more Mixon, but I like where the direction is heading for him as a player because I think that's appropriate. All right, so that puts a bow on the second round. Let's jump into the third round here with one of my favorite players. You ready, Jay Wayne? Yeah, we're there. All right, Clyde Edwards-Alaire off the board, 25, same as last month. No real change there, equal. Uh, the same exact value he was last for the, month. All the Chiefs move up. Clyde Edwards stays where he is. He's he's probably my favorite uh, pick. Sophomore pick, running back. Pick to, pick to snag right now. Love some Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Uh, don't want to get too much into it right now. Again, don't want to beat it to death, but we will be talking a lot more about all those guys in uh, some upcoming episodes here. So uh, subscribe. <laughs> uh, they got it. So I like, I like, I really do like that. If you're, if you're telling me I can get Clyde Edwards a to kick off the third round, which doesn't happen in any of the mocks that we do, mm -mm. Um, but that's absolutely ridiculous. No, Cause I'm picking somewhere in the second round in these mocks. Yeah, sure. So. <laughs> For sure. Um, and you are too. Like uh, yeah. one of us is picking in the second round. You Aaron, can't trade your second round pick. Aaron Jones drops from twenty three to twenty six. Kittle doesn't move. He stays where he was at. Nuke drops from twenty eight to, to twenty four. He was he was at twenty four. He dropped down to twenty eight. So you get a little bit more value on on DeAndre Hopkins here. 
uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not upset about it. We did trade him away in one league where we were just an absolute dumpster fire, uh, but got a haul for him. Team. So, yeah, orphan team. Uh, so then the next pick is the first quarterback off the board. No surprise here. Patty Mahomes gets slung into the third round here. Which that is surprising. And we'll again talk about that in the mock, so subscribe. I uh, wanted to take that first quarterback. Jamar Chase, still the second rookie off the board, um, but did quite take quite a tumble here. He dusts himself off, picks himself up, checks in at 30, falling from 21. Again, it was one of those things where I don't really understand what the warranted drop-off was to be that much. Just one of those weird things in, in this difference from May to June. Like, what was the deal that you thought that he really needed to fall that far? I don't really understand that one. I just Let feel me, like he's gaining steam, and it would be right. It would go the opposite direction, right? But. So, not really understanding that one, but Jamar Chase for sure. Miles Sanders moves up a few spots. Uh, he he's to thirty one. No thanks. Et you. gets his name called at pick thirty two, and coming up on his rear is Kyle Pitts and Javante Williams, right there, neck and neck, uh, thirty three and thirty four here. Et and Pitts stay relatively in the same neighborhood from last month, but Javante was the big mover up eight spots from forty two. Uh, so Javante gaining some steam here. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. Didn't see that coming. I thought he would probably stay where he is, but I guess, you know, a lot of people do have him. He, I guess he probably went to where a lot of people, the public kind of do view him from where he kind of was. Um, and I, I believe ET and Pitts actually dropped a pick or two. So it's, it's not unusual that, uh, Javante gets taken over ET. So yeah, definitely people are on that, on that train. Let me get that ET. Uh, Terry McLaurin drops a bit, settles in at 35. Michael Thomas rounds out the third round, uh, drops three spots down from uh, 32 or four spots from 32. So you, uh, you ready to move to the uh, fourth round here? <clears throat> sure. All right. So kicking off the fourth round, another running back. Josh Jacobs moves up a couple spots to pick 37, uh, pick 4-1 here. DJ Moore drops 10 spots, almost a full round to 38. What's up with that? So again, don't really understand that. feel like the situation probably got better for him uh, as far as quarterback-wise. I mean, I guess, yeah, when you're looking at the overall picture, we're not really sure about Sam Darnold, but I feel like there's just a lot more uh, explosive plays that, that are could potentially happen in this offense, and I can't imagine it gets really much worse. Right. I don't think he can be worse – not saying Teddy Bridgewater's bad, but yeah. I don't think that, that Sam Darnold's going to take the level of production that far down. And they lost Curtis Samuel, but they did bring in Terrace Marshall. So I, I maybe but again, that's a rookie, some of it. So. But, right. And, and with a little bit of an injury history, although I do love Terrace. Uh, DJ Moore at 28 is way too expensive. I'm never going to take him in the, at the top of the third round, I don't think. Uh, I think fourth round here is is much more comfortable for me to – to take DJ Moore, who's still uh, you know a pretty young guy and is still still has some ceiling. To still hit. very good and um, has been pretty good. Just hasn't been quite up to the spreadsheet warriors' expectation. Uh, but still, he's at least hanging on for like Nikhil Harry is out of here. Yeah, DJ Moore is hanging on. Has ha, is has been very good. Just hasn't got into that great category just yet. Sure. Um, but I think it's there. He could be there. He, he has the ability to be there. Uh, Mike Evans and teammate Chris Godwin are the next two off the board. Uh, Evans is up seven spots. Godwin down five spots. Um, I'd probably flip it and reverse it like Missy Elliott on those. <laughs> it's your flip from this one's mad yet. <laughs> uh, let me get all that Godwin. Uh, sure, I'm still okay with Mike Evans, but let me get the Godwin. Uh, Darren Waller's been hovering right around 40 uh, for a bit, so stays right there. Pick 41. A Rob drops down a bit despite maybe having the best situation he's ever been in. I mean, you ageist pricks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so five, spots not, five spots isn't that. No, that many. no. I, I'm just I'm just messing around. I think A Rob <laughs> continues to be one of the best values. He's perennially just QB proof. He just fan fucking tastic. And I feel like he's one of those guys that if you don't have him on your team, you just don't even understand. You don't understand every um, week he's wide receiver one for right. you. So, A-Rob, holler at your boy. Oh, hey, look, it's Josh Allen, second quarterback. Come on down. <laughs> I mean, I get it. He could be a difference maker, but I'm probably not really taking a quarterback here. Yeah, uh, I don't think this is where we'll be advising people to snag their first quarterback in a non-Superflex draft yeah. once we get to that video. 
Let me get that subby. Yeah. Subscribe. <laughs> Scribies. Subbies. <laughs> Amari Cooper uh, down from, or sorry, Keenan Allen. Don't want to skip Keenan. God damn it. I feel bad that I just even skipped over Keenan Allen. He remains the same. Dodge um, a Julio bullet. Yeah. And, and I think for win now drafters, like as far as guys who just built like a couple of good running backs and have another good player and you, you feel like you're, you're just, I mean, I feel like I'm always trying to win now, but I've, I know some people don't necessarily go into that mindset of maybe I'm going to go productive struggle or, you know, I'm going to get running backs, you know, fill them in in the next two or three years. Somebody who's going all in and now you've drafted a Keenan Allen and going to put a couple older guys on the roster. Like, I feel like he's a perfect guy. Like he's fantastic. He's not going to drop off at all at least this year i don't think uh i think herbert you know will be just fine might possibly regress a little bit but keenan will still be great his age is gonna make him never get any higher but right like you but said that you're not drafting him for that purpose you're right. drafting him to score points and win right now and that's built into this adp right. this is late fourth round and then you can come back and take a younger dude in the in the later rounds to kind of counter that you could come back with like a chase claypool or something in the fifth or sixth and right if i grab one of these high in you know, wide receivers like a nuke that are that are older, you know, or a Keenan or something. I'm looking to pair them with some youth, you know, a little bit later, which yeah, we'll get more into that on another video. <laughs> so Amari Cooper uh, down from 39 to 45. Um, keep falling, baby. To me, he's a guy that I keep targeting in hopes that he'll falls in these startup mocks because I'm I'm usually hammering running backs for the most part through the first couple of rounds because it gets so dry. It's like a desert out there. And Amari Cooper is going to be a guy that I'm always looking for, hoping that he falls just those couple of extra picks that I can scoop up Amari Cooper because I'm I'm still drinking the Amari Cooper Kool-Aid. Got uh, to. A lot of hate out there for him, but I'm, I'm down with Amari. David Montgomery remains the same again. And let me get that. All day. You guys were doing so good for a little while. You had him elevated, and now he's back down a little bit. But that's fine. I'll take I'll take David. All um, day. I'll take David all day long. If I can get Montgomery in the fourth round as my third running back, I'm, I'm that's my I'm prime. Pretty, I'm excited. Right. I'm definitely excited. Uh, Brandon Ayuk drops a little bit from 47, uh, from 43 to 47. Uh, then Kyler, uh, third quarterback off the board here. Uh, just gross. Um, I mean, the, not not that not that I'm disliking Kyler Murray or disliking you it's know, just too expensive. You guys do you, but I mean, I'm just probably not taking a quarterback just yet. Like, there's just still some really good talent on the board, and yes, Kyler certainly can be a difference maker. So, like, I get it. The Josh Allen's, the Mahomes, and the and the Kyler Murray's and the Lamar Jacksons, like, certainly can be difference makers. So, you know, I'm not not really hating too much it's just not my personal strategy if i they're usually the default that if i get in a, in a dead zone where i feel like i missed just missed out on some tear drops and some tear cuts and maybe i'm going to pick again kind of soon and i feel like there's the big difference that i can make it's just kind of all relative of how the the board kind of falls so i'm not right. really necessarily hating on those guys i do understand the the positional value that they can give you and the the week to week um value that they can really give you but but there are players that aren't even on this list that need to get taken before yeah like i mean I'm, I'm fine with taking kyler before deontay johnson and lamar before deontay johnson and and josh allen before deontay johnson i'm probably not taking deontay johnson this high anyway he's the next guy on the board he's a 49 um he's been kind of off the list and on the list throughout the time we've been doing this through the whole off season and i'm not hating on deontay johnson by any means but i can get it taking Kyler Murray a pick ahead of him because of the positional difference he can make. Whereas Deontay Johnson, where I do like Deontay Johnson and he was clear, we've talked about it a million times was Roethlisberger's go-to guy. You know, what happens in a year for him? I don't really know when Roethlisberger's not around anymore and the Steelers are looking for a quarterback. I think they're a good organization and they'll probably figure it out, but he may not get the same kind of love and just pumped targets that he's getting right now. Um, so, I get it. And then finally, to wrap this thing up, it's T. Higgins. Uh, he rounds out the top 50. I love that. Let me get all that T, both the testosterone and the T. <laughs> High T, baby. He might have taken a little T this offseason. He's, he's in good shape. Lost a little baby fat. Just working out, getting, getting on his grinding grizzly. Ripped arms, pumped abs. <laughs> And legs of steel. If you want real, re real results, Bowflex. You got to get a real Bowflex. Bowflex. <laughs> Nineties kids. Yeah, 
Bowflex for sure. I love some T Higgins. I'll take them all day at this value. I'm constantly drafting T Higgins. I love it. I think Burrow can support easily support two high end guys, and T looks like he could be a stud. And Jamar Chase is uh, a rookie and is probably going to crush. But T Higgins already crushed with Joe Burrow with and without AJ Brown or AJ Green, and give me all the T Higgins I can get. I'll take it. And, and and now he knows what it is, and he seems to maybe even be taking it a step further. So let me get all that tea. Um, so the, some notable guys on and off the uh, the 50 here. Jerry, Judy, and Sutton were booted from the top 50 in May uh, from May's list, and they're at 58 and 60 now. So a little bit of a drop for those guys, but I like both of them. Both guys are guys that I'd be targeting in drafts. Uh, TJ Hawkinson and Claypool are coming in at 51 and 54. I do like both of those guys as well. Guy, give me some Claypool, man. Julio. Claypool. Julio just traded Jones. He drops down to 52. Um, So, you know, I'm not mad about that. That's like, hey, he could have plenty left in the tank. You know, I'd probably hope he drops just a little bit further for me to really grab him, but. That's just being greedy. I haven't seen him go that early in, in, in most and of these none mocks, of the mocks that we've think. been doing. Yeah. He hasn't gone quite that early. Uh, then Mark Andrews and Kenny G, uh, 53 and 56. Uh, Devonta Smith at 59. Uh, really like that. Jalen Waddell, 63. Then Kareem Hunt, 64. And just the last rookie that everybody was excited about, seemingly Rashad Bateman at 74 to round this epic show out. Um, <laughs> You know, again, not a whole lot of meat and potatoes here. Just kind of want to hit you with the landscape of, of where we're at and, you know, checking in on value. Got to keep all your we're pulse. Doing here. Right. Got to keep your pulse to the ground and understand the people that are that are changing these ADPs and when they change. And it's just a way to understand when there could be some value. And that's all we're looking for is is some value, baby. Let me get some value. And well, DK Metcalf's not the first wide receiver off the board in your startup draft. He's a value. <laughs> hey. Whatever you got to tell yourself, bud. He's fantastic. He is fantastic. I don't mean to be hating on him, but... You're hating. I'm not hating. All right, we got anything else? No, I mean, he should have drafted DK and AJ Brown over to kill Harry. So let's wrap up with that. Yeah. You heard it here. Jay Wayne told you. (coughs) He did. (coughs) He sure did. All right, let's get the fuck out of here. All right. I'll see you next time. Subscribe for all those other shows we were telling you about. Let me get an iTunes review if you're listening on the podcast, you know? That would be that would be fantastic. Thank y'all. Appreciate you. Peace.